Okay, here's the deal. After you watch this video, go watch the full video on tuning the engine because this video only shows you what the inside of a carb looks like. Now, if that's the only thing you're interested in, fine, but probably you would want to know how to tune it also. So go watch the full video, please. I know it's long, but it's one hour, 20 minutes of value. This is a classic carb. This is the 21J made by OS in Japan. This is the ultimate racing uh, version. So it says M line on it, but it's the same, same OS 21J. Uh, this right here, this is the high speed needle or top end or main needle. Over here, we have the low speed needle or low end or bottom end needle. And this is a carb with three, well, people say needles, but this isn't actually a needle. OS calls this a mixture control valve. And then finally we have this, this is just the idle stop screw. And uh, this is where the air filter goes. So the air filter attaches on here, air goes in there, comes out here. This is where the carb attaches to the engine. Uh, you can see right through the carb there. You see now the throttle is closed. There we open it. And here's a rubber boot to protect the, the slide. That's where the fuel goes in. Yeah. That's what a carb looks like. We're done with the video, right? We won. All right, hey. All right, good job, guys. No, we're not done. So this high-speed needle, this is what regulates fuel flow at full throttle. So when the throttle is wide open, this needle regulates the amount of fuel entering the carb. So this right here, this is the body for the high-speed needle. So as you can see, it's hollow. You can see right through it and there's a hole there. So when the fuel enters, it will go into this hole and then flow into the body of the carb. So let's just attach the high speed needle. The needle goes in right here. So the fuel tubing attaches here. The fuel flows in here through the hole that I just showed you into the center hollow part of the main needle holder or body and then it flows down into the carb. So what you are actually doing when you are adjusting this high speed needle, as you can see, the needle is tapered. And as you tighten the needle, you are reducing the space the fuel has to flow into the body of the carb. So essentially the high speed needle limits the total amount of fuel that can enter the carb. Once that fuel has entered the carb, then the mixture con control valve becomes relevant. Now, some engines don't have this third, which people call the third needle, but it's like you can see, it's not actually a needle. It's this valve. It's hollow. You can see that there's a hole at the end and it's hollow inside. And then there's a hole here. For fuel to flow into but let's attach this and then I'll explain how it works. So now we're at the situation where fuel has flown in, it's flown past the high speed needle and it's entered the body of the carb and here you can see that in this area that's limited by this o-ring, inner o-ring here and outer o-ring here, this becomes a chamber for the fuel. It's almost like a float bowl. And what this does is as the throttle opens, the bigger this chamber is, the more fuel can quickly flow into the engine. 
when you adjust this mixture control valve, what actually happens is when I tighten this screw, the size of this chamber here, the amount of volume, the amount of fuel that can be stored here, ready to go into the engine as the throttle opens, this actually reduces. So there will be less fuel available, which means that the mid range of the engine will be leaner. And when I open this mixture control valve, the opposite happens. So it grows. So there'll be more fuel available here. So this then causes the mid range to be richer. There's one more thing that happens when you adjust the mixture control valve, but I'm not convinced that it plays a big role in the performance of the mid range. It has to do with how the, the valve moves into the opening of the carb. So you can see that it's moving in and out there. And that's what we call the spray bar. And we'll touch on that later when we talk about the low speed needle. But as I said, I believe that for mid range performance, what's more relevant is the si size of that chamber there for the fuel. Okay, so let's move on. We're now at the stage where the fuel has entered the carburetor. It's flown past the high speed needle. It's flown through the mixture control valve. And now the fuel is exiting this hole here. So it's exiting the spray bar. And now we need to talk about the low speed needle. But before that, we have this part. This is the, the carb barrel or the slider. This is the part that slides in and out as the throttle opens. So it goes in the end of the carb here. Let's see. Like so. So this is actually what opens the thr throttle. So it's closed now and then you open it. Boom. Full throttle. And this is what I've been using as a pointer. This is the low speed needle. So you can see here, there's an O-ring at the end, then a portion of threads, and it's uh, just lengthened so that it reaches into the carb and then the end is tapered. So this needle slides in the barrel and you can see that the end slides into the spray bar there, into the mixture control valve and I'll just attach this to its proper setting so you can see what happens. So the airflow is going through here. So when the throttle is closed, when the throttle is at idle, very little air, you can see through the carb there, a small amount of air can get in. So not, we don't need a lot of fuel either at this point. But as the throttle opens, more and more air can flow through the carb into the engine. So we also need to allow for more fuel to flow into the engine. Because remember, the key point is the mixture of air and fuel. So the more air you have, the more fuel you also need. So as you can see, this tapered low speed needle is pulling out of the spray bar here. And as it's pulling out, it's allowing for more fuel to enter the engine. The low speed needle, what you are really adjusting for with it is the engine performance at idle and you're adjusting it for initial opening of the throttle, initial acceleration. As you close the needle, it goes deeper into the spray bar and reduces the amount of fuel that can flow through here. So closing the needle will reduce the amount of fuel flow leaning out the engine. So at idle like this, less fuel can enter the engine. And when you open the low speed needle, the opposite is true. So you see the tapered part is moving out of the spray bar, allowing for more fuel to flow in. So the engine will be richer. And finally, we have the idle stop screw. So this is an 
a needle that adjusts fuel flow. This is just a mechanical stop screw to adjust the position of the barrel. So we've been looking at this side of the carb all along. Now we flip it over and over here, you can see that there's a groove in the barrel. And this screw goes in here. And once I tighten it up, you can see that it's going to go into that groove, limiting the movement of the barrel. You can see that it's actually stopping the barrel from moving further in. So just to demonstrate that, if I tighten the idle stop screw, it actually starts moving the barrel outwards. And if I open up the screw, you see I can, now I can push the barrel further in. This screw also limits how far the barrel can move out. So now it's at full throttle. Without this screw, this part, this slide, the barrel, it would just come out all the way. So it's stopping the barrel at full throttle and also adjusting the point at which it stops when you push it in. This is essentially now the idle position. I'll, I'll show it on another carb and then explain the idle gap to you. Because that, my friend, is key to everything.